Hey folks, Quilly Keen here, and welcome to a Unity tutorial on callbacks and events. I actually got an email the other day asking about how to do callbacks and things in Unity, and I was surprised. I was like, haven't I done a tutorial about this before? And while we have done many callbacky things in many of the tutorials and games that we've made together on the channel, it doesn't look like I've made a video specifically oriented on that. So that's what we're doing today. First, it's going to be a two-part video here. We're going to start with what I'm going to call the direct callback method, which is actually something that we've done uh, basically in all the videos up to now. And then we're going to look at a different way to do it, which I'm going to call it event callback scene. It's sort of an event manager or event queue or message pump or a variety of different ways that we can call it. And I think is probably going to be a superior way to do it going forward. Anyway, I've set up a little uh, test um, environment to work with this. It's very, very, very simple. I'm going to hit play over here. Uh, there's nothing in the scene. There's two units. There's an event, a unit spawner and a unit death listener. If I hit the S key, the unit spawner will spawn a unit, just a cube in the middle of the screen. And if I hit D, all the units will kill themselves. Boom. That's all that happens over here. I'll very quickly showcase the code that we've got to make this go. I've got the spawner object over here in the update. It's just listening to see if the S key is pushed down. If it is, it calls spawn unit, which just instantiates a unit and does nothing else. And then each unit is just a prefab that has this health component on it. And all it's doing right now is listening for the D key and then it dies. When it, it, call, when it gets the D key, it calls die dies for some reason and destroys itself. You know, presumably this would be from running out of health or, you know, falling off a cliff or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, but at some point, something will cause a unit to die, period. Now, we want to have, something in the game wants to listen for these death events. This could be all kinds of things. Because, uh, of course, we could do something like, you know, uh, play death sound, uh, spawn explosion, uh, increase score, drop loot. Like, you know, this might be a player dying. This could be another unit, like a monster dying. This could be all kinds of different things. But, you know, there's a bunch of things you could do. And you could write all that code in line over here. But what we want to do is we want to avoid that. One of the key things in game development, or in fact, most software development, is the, the decoupling of various mechanics. There's no reason a unit, you know, let's say we're, I don't know, we're, we're, we're making a, a StarCraft clone, and this is a Zergling. There's no reason that the code required to run a Zergling needs to know anything about how the sound system works, or the physics system works, or how the score system works, if it's, a, if it's a system where you score points from killing units. There's no reason an enemy unit needs to know how the scoring system works at all. Right, And that way, if you make a change, if you make a change to how your sound is managed, if you make a change to how your point system is managed or how power-ups get dropped, you don't have to change the code in every place where something dies. Instead, what we're, we're, we're going to do, what's quite nice to do, is to, instead of doing this manually, tell you what, we, we, I will put in some sort of note. Um, we could do these manually here, but what happens if we add, remove, or change how these systems work. Um, instead, we want to allow um, other systems to listen for our death and be alerted when that happens. Okay, when we die, instead of taking these actions directly, we want to just let the other systems know, hey, by the way, we dead now, so do whatever it is you want to do. And so our example for that is that I've got this death listener in here. So this is something that is um, instantiated. It's attached to a game object that is in the scene. This death listener is sitting there and is waiting for on unit died. All, all this death listener does is output something to the debug log, that's it. But this could be anything. This could be something that keeps track of score, drops power up, etc., etc., etc. It's just something that its job is to probably do one thing. You probably want a separate one for each one of these, right? So, like, imagine that this is just your sound manager. It does a lot of things, the sound manager. It's playing tunes in the background, it's doing whatever. But one of the things it would like to do is it would like to be told whenever a unit dies because it's going to play death sound effects. And it might have some sort of code in here, like, what if 100 units die at the same time? Well, we don't want to play 100 sound 
sounds instantaneously. So maybe what we'll do is just play a couple of them at the same time, offset slightly, but at a higher volume. Like this way we've got we've got more control over how to mix those events over here. Um, a lot of games, uh, when a bunch of units die, like when units die, you might earn points. But instead of showing plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one score for every unit that died, it'll sort of aggregate them together and then just tell you, hey, you just earned 57 points simultaneously. Like, good job, you, right? It's also really good, these callbacks, for achievement systems. You don't want every unit in the game to be aware of what your achievements for the game is. Instead, you have some sort of achievement listener somewhere that listens to various events and then uses that to track if achievements should be activated. Anyway, in this case, we just want this to run whenever a unit dies. So how are we going to do that? Well, on our unit, and this is something we've done before, um, our unit, which actually I should probably rename this code instead of being health, I should probably just call it unit logic. But typically I have a component on a unit to track its health, which is responsible for this. It has like a function to like take damage or, or whatever. And it's also responsible for processing the death. In here, let's provide some sort of way to register a function. Basically, we want this function here to be called whenever a unit dies. So how do we do that? Well, there's a variety of different ways to do it in C Sharp. In fact, there's a variety of different ways to do it in many languages. Probably what we're gonna wanna do first is define, in this case, with the, the direct um, the direct callback system, which is what I'm calling it here. We're gonna uh, go and designate some sort of delegate. A delegate, I, I'm, I don't like using the term in this way exactly for delegate, but basically a delegate here is we're gonna define some sort of function template, some sort of signature for a function that we can then refer to. Let's just do an example and we'll see how it goes. Let's say we define a delegate. So we're gonna say there's gonna be some sort of function that returns void. Um, it's gonna be called something like on death delegate, on death callback delegate. There we go. We'll be really wordy as I usually am in the tutorials. And it's something that's gonna require a single parameter, which is gonna be a unit death info um, and we don't even need to worry about a name here, but let's oops, specify something like, how do you, there you go, enter there. Okay, it's gonna have a single parameter like that. So this doesn't do anything by itself. This is define a template or signature for a function. And then what we can have is some sort of, let's say, let's say list for now. We're gonna change this in a second, but let's say we wanna have a list of on death callback delegate type functions. So this is something, these are my um, on death callback listeners, I guess it would be, this would be. I guess on death listeners is probably listeners. Listeners is always the way I have to pronounce this to keep track. So we're gonna have this, this list, right? It could be an array, could be all kinds of different types of structures, but we're gonna have a list in this case. Um, for death listeners. And what we want to do is when we die, let all our listeners know that we have died. First, we'll do something like if on death listeners is not equal to null, right? Because it's possible. I mean, we could set up and start or something like that and make sure it exists or something, but whatever. For now, we'll just make sure it's not a null file. And then what we're going to do is something like for each uh, what do I call this? On death callback delegate. So we'll call this something like funk in this list. Okay. Uh, let's go lowercase. Or no, that's gotta be uppercase. Yeah, there, excellent. And then all we're gonna do is call those functions. Now this requires a unit death info. So let's go and we're gonna create a unit death info. Uh, UDI is equal to a new unit death info. And this class here is just very simple. This could be this could be a struct. It could be set up for read only. It could set up some constructors or something like that. I don't, I don't know, you know, what this structure should look like, what this form should look like. But this is some way for us to pass data to that function. I mean, we could have on unit died instead of having a single sort of structure. We can say something like, well, okay, what is the killer? Uh, what is a, you know some sort of other object that like describes my death? that like, you know, I died in fire, I did, you know, I, I killed myself, I whatever. Rather than having some sort of really complicated set of parameters here that might change a bunch of times, we'll have the idea that we're waiting for a particular class, particular structure, and it'll have a variety of different values in here 
um, that will be used or ignored by different death listeners. Because a lot of things might listen for a unit's death. Not everything cares about every part of this unit death info. So we can add more stuff as needed by various sub-functions without hurting everything else. Um, okay, so we've got this kind of set up in here. So the death listener is eager for that. So here we're creating a new unit death info. And all we're doing in here is the one value that's in here, the unit game object. We're gonna set it to be our own game object. So we're populating the unit death info with our, uh, yeah, with this. Right? This is the unit that died. So unit death info wants to know the dead unit, which is going to be this. I suppose I could call, let me rename that. Um, what's the shortcut key? I'm still getting used to um, Visual Studios over here. Oh, it is just F2. Um, dead unit game object. There we go. So we're going to rename it that way. And so over here, dead unit game object, we pass it there. And we simply call this function with our UDI over here. So there could be many. We could have a hundred things listed. 100 things listening to us, or or nothing listening to us, entirely possible. We don't know, but we're going to loop through this entire list and call those. Now, this works fine and is very handy. But the question is, okay, how do we actually add something to this list? So at this point, what you'd have to do is generate some sort of function that's like, it has to be public. I mean, we could just make this list public, but that would be a really bad idea. I mean, we could write horrible code somewhere that breaks something. And what if we change the way that this works? There's all sorts of reasons why we might not want to do this. So we could create some sort of function that's something like register death callback. And all it does is it requires that you give me an all death on death callback delegate, which we'll call F. And then in here, what we would just do is use something on death listeners add F. And then we probably want to do something like, you know, if on death listeners, is equal to null, then we instantiate it and so on and so forth. Now, this, this will work. However, Unity does provide us a very convenient keyword to make, or not Unity, C Sharp provides us with a very, um, very handy keyword, very convenient keyword that makes our life slightly simpler. Instead of just having this list that we manage ourselves and having to write these little functions, what we can do instead is simply declare an event. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, actually, I could have kept this lowercase just for now. Give me, give me a second. We'll leave this here. On death listeners. Uh, no little thingy. Make sure it compiles. There we go. This event keyword here basically does exactly what we had before. This makes a list of on death callbacks that we can add or remove things from. Okay. Now, again, I could still at this point have a, um, a public void uh, register yada yada yada, register yada, um, which is an on death callback func. And what we could do is we could add it to the on death listeners uh, simply by doing, you know, adding it this way uh, func. What are you complaining about? Inconsistent accessibility, less accessible than. Oh, uh, since this is uh, this, since this function is public and on death callback uh, is required as a parameter, we need to make sure that this, this delegate is public. We need to let the, the rest of the world know that this delegate exists as a function, so that the rest of the code can see it and know what to put in here. Now it's worth noting we don't have to use this anywhere else. We don't have to like make our so our death listener over here, this thing here. We don't have to use this on death callback delegate to declare this function. It's just, as long as this signature here, it returns a void, it requires a unit death info is there, we can use it as part of registering yada over here in there. And we can add it in there and that's fine. Then we write an unregister yada and so on. But the, the whole point of using this event is that we don't have to write these functions for us. Instead, what we can do is this. If I set this to be public, then another piece of code, for example, our death listener, it's let's assume at this point. So we have we have some sort of health, you know, some sort of health thing, right? Some unit health that we picked up somewhere, and we could call unit health dot on death listeners, and we could register our own on unit died. Now we can do that. We're gonna get underlined here because it's unassigned right now. 
Um, so it won't compile, it'll complain because we haven't assigned this, but otherwise the syntax is okay. We can do this to add ourselves to the list of death listeners. Now at this point you might say, whoa, but we don't want this to be public. Well, it turns out it's okay. First of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and rename this to uh, have a capital because we are gonna have it public over here, okay? It seems bad, but it turns out events are kind of special. Um, if we have it, uh, what's the default? Is it protected? I think it's protected by default if we don't do anything else with it. Then what we, we can no longer access it from outside of that class. So we couldn't add it in here. If we make it public, we can access it out of that outside of that class, but only to do two things, either add ourselves to the list or remove ourselves from the list. We cannot set the list. This should give us an error and it does. We also are not allowed to call these functions. I can't go and say, haha, let's try to call on death listeners from outside of this. Event makes it impossible. Event is like a really weird halfway point between having a public um, property and a protected property. So it doesn't let anyone else mess with it directly. The only thing you can do is add yourself to the list of listeners or remove yourself from the list of listeners. But it saves you from having to write the whole register and unregister functions. Very handy. So otherwise it works exactly the same. All right, so we've defined the signature and then we've got this on death listeners that are waiting here to be told that this guy died. And then over here, uh, we still have to check for nullness, which annoys me with the events. I wish it were a little smarter that it wouldn't it would automatically do that. But we still have to check to see if on death listeners is null. And then we can still, uh, we don't actually have to loop through it. This um, is technically not legal, apparently. I thought you still could do this. But I guess on death listeners not innumerable. But instead of looping through these and calling funk once each, instead what we can do is just say, hey, call this. This will call every single function that was registered in our death listeners, this will call them all with this. Now that's pretty cool. There is something missing again. If we go and we, we compile it and we know we've got to run in line somewhere, at some point, chuka chuka chuka, chuka chuka chuka, there we go. We've been told we're trying to use an unassigned local variable unit health. And that's over here in the death listener. The death listener wants to listen to when the units die, how does it actually register itself? Basically, what we need is every time, like for every unit that exists, every unit that gets spawned, we have to tell that unit, hey, um, I want to listen to you. I want to listen in case you die. So what it means is we need another set of, of events and another set of listeners over here. So in our spawner, we sort of need some sort of public delegate uh, void on unit spawned delegate delegate which takes a um, could be a game object let's let's assume it's just gonna be looking for this health thing I don't know again I should have just called this class unit but let, let's keep going with it so it requires some sort of um, some sort of volatility that way and then we'll make a public event which is on unit spawns delegate on unit spawned listeners like that and then whenever we spawn a unit what we do is say okay um if on unit spawn listeners is not equal to null then we're going to call this for this with the get component health so we're going to get the health component from this newly spawned game object and we're going to let everyone who wants to listen in on their unit spawning know that this is happening so now our death listener changes up. What we're going to do is, in the start, we're going to find, so our spawner, okay? Spawner, we're going to do something like game object dot find uh, object of type spawner, like this. And then we're going to say spawner dot um, on unit spawned listeners, we're going to register a function here. So I need another function on unit spawned and this is going to take a health parameter over here so when a unit gets spawned please call my on unit spawned uh on unit spawned apparently i have to hit down arrow twice for there and then on unit spawned will simply say something like hey health uh dot on unit on death listeners okay i'm being inconsistent with my names but then we're going to call on unit died no, died. 
the autocomplete in here. I'm still getting used to. It's been a long time working with Mono Develop. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this is worse. This is clearly much better, but oof. Okay, so now we listen for when a unit gets spawned, and then when a unit gets spawned, we say, hey, uh, let me know uh, when you die, please. Now, what we probably want is we might want some on destroys to deregister ourselves or all kinds of things. I don't know. We'll see. But at this point, in theory, unless I've forgotten a step, Compile, 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 compile. That's our old error here. Okay. If I hit play, no error. If I hit S and then D, there we go, it works. So actually, we should add a little bit more debug uh, over here, like debug.log um, on unit spawn, spawn notified. So now every time we spawn a unit, we'll get a little notified in here to confirm that our listener, there you go, has been notified that these units are spawning. And then if I hit D, all the units will die, and our death listener has been alerted about each one of those unit deaths. Boom, done. But you can already see, this is a little cumbersome, right? We need to make sure we register ourselves over here. We don't actually care. Our death listener doesn't care at all about unit spawnings, except it's forced to care about it so that it can properly register itself in the list of things to listen over there, which is kind of awkward. Is there a way around some of this double step? And is there a way we can avoid registering ourselves as a listener to every single unit? Because every single unit that spawns has to maintain this list of things that listen, which is almost always going to be duplicated, right? It's almost always going to be the same thing over and over. So what we could do is instead of having each unit's health have this on death callback delegates, have this thing, you know, list with a list of listeners. We could have it be static, right? We could change this. And let's do this for the sake of argument. If I change this to be a static public event callback delegate, okay? So by being static, this is shared by all instances of the class in here. And then, um, so when we die, we still call the death listeners. Nothing, nothing here will change. When a unit dies, it still calls all the death listeners. This happens to be static, but that's okay. And the difference becomes our death listener over here no longer needs to register itself with every single unit that ever appears. Instead, in fact, we don't even care about listening for spawn events anymore. This entire function here can be commented out. Uh, there's a key for it. I don't know what it is yet. Yeah, control E, C. Yeah, th th this corded macro is, I don't know if I'll get used to that. Instead, what we're gonna do when the death listener starts, it's gonna grab the health class, right? The whole static class, which has this on, which has this on death listeners, thank you, uh, thing. And we're gonna register ourselves at that point. So we've now registered ourselves on the class level. So for all units, for everything with a health component, we want to be told when they die. So now if we go and go to Unity over here and hit play, if I spawn a unit, we'll no longer get the message that I've been notified because I no longer listen for spawns. But when I hit D to kill all these, we've been alerted about unit deaths. So that's a little bit more convenient with the static. The downside is we do get told about every single unit death, and maybe death listener doesn't care. Maybe we only want to listen for when enemy unit dies, or maybe we only want to listen to when player units die. Now, of course, we could do a filter over here, or, you know, because we know what our, our dead unit is, right? We could do something like, do we need to check if uh, dead unit go is a unit we care to listen to? For example, only the player. And we could do that. It actually wouldn't even be that hard or that time consuming to do. So, but that's one way you can keep this a little bit cleaner. So that's direct callbacks. But what I want to do now is I want to look at an event-based callback system instead. Um, and there are advantages and probably disadvantages to doing this as well. So I have a separate scene set up. Wow, that was weird and laggy. Separate scene set up. It's exactly the same just called event callback scene over here. Uh, the basic um, bits and bobs of it are the same. If we go ahead and close all these windows uh, and open up the event callback scene version, the scripts are the same. It's still the inappropriately named health script instead of whatever. We got the spawner over here, it works exactly the same. And then we've got the death listener and the unit death info over here. But what we might wanna do instead, um, instead of having the death listener be responsible for registering itself for a particular callback, we might want to have a, a central event queue. So what am I talking about? Let's say we have some sort of extra script in here 
And so this is going to be our this is going to be our event system, not to be confused with Unity's like GUI event system. Probably should name it something else. But uh, we'll just put it in our namespace over here, just to keep things nice and isolated. Uh, what did I pick for the namespace? That yeah, this thing here. There we go. That way it's got its own little space, and we don't have to worry about colliding with the name of another class. All right. So we got this event system. Uh, is it going to be a mono of behavior attached to a game object, or is it just going to be a static class? Hey, you can pick and choose. Let's go ahead and just make an empty over here. And we're going to call you event system. And we're just going to give you this thing over here. Boom. Done. Okay. So the idea with this is the event system is going to be responsible for uh, handling all these, these sort of callback -y events. Basically, anyone who does anything can just send a, an event through the event system to let whoever's interested in let them know. It's nice and centralized. The, um, the advantage of this is that all the various subscripts don't have to... Health, for example, won't need to have its own list of listeners in here. And additionally to that, um, the the deaf listener doesn't have to know the class that it has to register itself to. Like, again, right now, our, this class is called health. What if we na later, later rename it to unit or we change a, lo a lot of the innate structure and all of a sudden we've broken this. Death listener was trying to connect up to this, this health class or this unit class or whatever and it was expecting things to be named a certain way but we, everything's broken because we decided to rewrite it from scratch and now none of this works. So now we've got these interconnected subsystems and that's not great. So instead in this event system, what we're gonna have is some sort of just central list, actually, many lists, basically a dictionary that's going to be organized based on the type of event. So let's assume we're going to do a very simple implementation of this, but let's say we've got some sort of public enum over here and we could put it outside the class as well, but it's going to be okay. Uh, and this is going to be something like um, event type. And so we've got lots of things like uh, unit spawn, uh, bullet shot, um, loot dropped, whatever. And finally, like something like unit died. Okay. So we've got a bunch of different types of events. And then what we're going to have is we're going to have a dictionary, which is going to be as a key is going to be keyed by event type. And as its value is then going to be a sub list of delegates. So we're going to have uh, some sort of public delegate 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 which is going to be an event listener listener and it's going to take um, a single value in here and this value is going to be something like a um, like an event it's going to take an event uh, which is already something in unity so we prop I mean well we'll just do another name for this base thing um, so let's create a new new class in here um just it's like generic whatever i'll hit this doesn't matter um this is going to be called event and it's going to be in our namespace because then the nice the thing with namespaces namespaces don't do much mechanically what they do is they allow you to define stuff and you don't have to worry about duplicating names names are you know there's no name duplication um concerns with things outside of the namespace and in terms of scope if our event system over here is saying like okay this event listener is going to be accepting an event e this is going to prefer the one from our namespace, the event callbacks namespace. So instead of the Unity's event or some other library we decide to add in here later on that also has its event class, this is going to prefer this one. We could also be explicit with it, right? I could specify, listen, this is the event callbacks event, but it's going to be okay. Uh, undo, what are you? Oh, um, derp. You're going to return void. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Uh, done, 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 done. We don't run this update. And mostly it's complaining because we've got syntax that's complete over here. So this dictionary is going to be indexed by event types and it's going to contain a list of event listeners. 
Again, we could use events and different things over here. Let's go and make an explicit sort of like list here and we'll figure stuff out. That's going to be okay. So this is going to be something like, um, this is like the master list of event listeners. This is just all event listeners. So we can just call it something like event listeners like that. And then we are going to need, in this case, a sort of registration and unregistration system. Again, we could write it in a few different ways, but I think it's going to be fine here because we're going to have to check to make sure that all these, like the dictionaries and the lists are all instantiated properly and everything like that. So we're going to have something like register listener. So listener. So when you register yourself to listen for an event, you're going to have to specify what event type you're listening for. And then you're going to have to provide a function, which is going to be an event listener. L, listener over there. Boom, done. So if we do that, okay, no red underlines, that's good. And so our job will be, first of all, we're gonna check, um, I guess, well, we're gonna check that the dictionary exists. So if event listeners is null, well, I mean, we could make sure this happens as part of the startup, but there, there could be a timing thing. Uh, this is probably best implemented as a static class rather than a mono behavior. But anyway, let, let's move on. If this is equal to null, then we need to make sure that this is instantiated as a new dictionary. Done. Okay. And then what we're going to do is if the event listener, listeners of event type is equal to null, then we need to make sure that this gets instantiated as a new list of event listeners. Done, done, done. And then finally, we can then do something like um, event listeners, event type dot add, and then we can go and add in the listener that was requested over here. I'm actually going to make an argument that this should probably, rather than a list, this should probably be a, like a set to ensure that we may not want to duplicate the same exact function twice. Uh, we might want to do a check for that. We could explicitly check for it or just use a different base type. There's a bunch of things we can do, but let, we'll go ahead and add a listener. Okay. And then we'll want uh, public void unregister register listener, uh, which is going to be the same signature. And we'll just remove ourselves from that to do. There you go. Left as an exercise for the viewer. But then finally, we want some sort of public void function over here, which is going to be something like fire event, okay? Or do event or whatever. I don't know what we're going to call it. We're going to call it fire event because it sounds cool. So this is what happens when some other piece of code decides to launch an event. So we're going to have to specify what the event type is, and then we're going to have to pass some sort of data. So we have this unit death info class over here. And really, this is this is some sort of event data, right? Or event info. So we could actually rename this slightly, and I will do so um, to call this unit death event info. And here's the one of the issues. You're like, okay, when we want to fire an event, when we have our unit that dies, let's go over to health over here. So what we want to be able to do is, uh, oh, we probably want a handy way to get the event listener. Um, I think we want some sort of um, public event system um, current get and we'll have a probably fully private event system um, current over here if current is equal to null oh this is a static public or static public, whatever. If current isn't set to anything, then what we'll do is we'll set current. Uh, this also has to be static. We'll set current to be equal to game object dot find object of type. So we're going to find the current um, event callback dot this. I don't think I actually have to specify it because with scope, it's going to be fine. There and, and put it in there. And then otherwise what you're going to do is return underscore current like that. Done. Okay. So now our health over here can just do something like uh, event system 
dot current dot um, fire event. And what we're specifying here is an event of type unit died. And then we have to specify info about it. We can't just say a unit died. We want the game to know which unit died. So what we'd like to do is probably something like set a new unit death event info. Um, and really this probably should have a constructor. I suppose we could just, you know, do something here. So uh, unit death event info, UDEI is equal to this. And we say UDEI dot um, unit game object that died is equal to our current game object. And so what we want to do is we want to pass this. So we're firing this event and then we're giving some info about this event. So again, all the details about this is me, this is who killed me, this is I died because of this type of damage or in this circumstance or whatever, whatever kind of things needs to be put in there, we can stuff into that game object or that uh, structure over here as we go. It's actually a class, but maybe it won't be later. We don't know. So we've got this. So this is sort of what makes sense is we need to fire this. So again, if we go back to our event system over here, fire event clearly needs to accept some sort of structure, but I don't want to have uh, unit death event info because like we're going to fire all kinds of different events. That's not just unit death events. And we don't know, like when we call, um, and, and a lot of different, sorry, let me reword this. So there's a lot of different types of events and different events will have all kinds of different information. So what we need to do is make this a little bit more generic over here. We need our unit death info over here, and I'm going to rename this file. Uh, this one over here is going to get renamed to um, event info like this. And so one of the things this file is going to have is public class event info. This is going to be the the base event info um, might have some generic text for doing debug dot log. And you know, I could see something like that. So you'd have, you know, we can probably assume we'll have some sort of public string, um, you know, event description. All events will have that. And then specific event types like the unit death info, we're going to have this be inherited or descended from event info. So unit death info is an event info. It's just adding more stuff. It still has the event description and then it has more stuff. So now all of a sudden our event system just accepts an event info of any kind. I don't care what kind of subtype, we're just going to have this. So our health code doesn't have to change over here. We're passing a unit death info which is a type of event info, and that's okay. Tell you what, let's go and add um, uh, dot uh, event description um, unit has died. And we do something like game object dot name or something like that. So we'll give it an event description, and then we also populate the unit that is now dead and probably other stuff in it later. And then we just go ahead and say, hey, event system, you can fire this event. Let everyone know that I am dead. And the achievement system can kick in, and the sound system can kick in, and the power drop system can kick in, and the user interface can do something special about it, and so on and so forth. Whoever, we don't care. We don't have to keep track of a bunch of listeners. Our only job is to let everyone know that we died. And the event system will then go over here and say, oh, okay. Um, something like, for, first of all, if um, we could use can we use the C sharp six question mark dot method here? Unless I go in the beta's version, let's leave that for another uh, episode. So first we need to make sure that the event listeners, uh, if the event listeners are null or event listeners for this event type is null, then no one's listening. So we can return right away. This is not an error. No one is listening. Listening, we are done. That's not an error, that's perfectly fine. Otherwise, if we get here, then what we have is our list of functions. And so we'll go ahead and do the for each loop for this. Uh, for each dele, delegate, what do we call this? 
Oh, event listener. For each event listener um, EL in this list of event listeners. And again, maybe maybe a for loop is better for, you know, garbage collection or whatever. We'll leave that to another thing. We're going to call that function, and we have to pass it the event. So we pass it event info. Done. Uh... Did I do this? Clearly I lost track of what I was doing. Let me delete this event file. And just specify that this is an event info. Called EI. There we go. My bad. Uh, any other... There's probably a place in here I can compile and check for compilation errors. I'll have to learn that. I'm just going to check over here. No, no errors or anything like that. Okay. So, when an event gets fired... We go through the list of everyone who's listening for this particular event. We call that function and pass it the event info. So now we come around all the way to our death listener over here. So what we want to do is our death listener wants to be told whenever a unit dies. So in the start, what we're going to do is something like event system dot current dot register a listener. We want to register on unit died as a listener for events of type unit died. So when a unit dies, we want to call, we want on unit died to be called. Now we're getting a red underline, and why is that? It's because the signature doesn't match. The delegate that um, register listener is looking for has to have a signature. Remember, the signature of this delegate has to be a function that returns void and takes a single parameter, which is an event info. Now the death listener function, our on unit died, doesn't just take a vanilla event info. It requires specifically unit death, which is no good. So what we're going to do is we have to change this to actually require a generic event info like this. Now this will make this call legal. We can now legally register ourselves to an event, but we know we need this to be a unit death info because um, the event info, the only thing it's got in it is an event description. But we need to know what unit died. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a cast over here. We're going to cast um, event info into a unit death event info. Now this is the one part of this process that I'm not super keen on. You know, Re-box the event info into unit death event info because it's only at runtime that you'll find out if you like are sending the wrong event somehow because what could happen is health over here could just create a generic event info and feed it in there although um i could make event info a virtual that would really avoid the problem or an abstract class rather here we'll do it just to say we're going to make this a public abstract class. So the idea is you can never instantiate event info directly. There's, it doesn't make any sense to just make event info. Although maybe it does. Maybe, you know, you want for just logging purposes, you want to just fire a generic event that just got a string that will then show up in the debug log or something. But probably you're, you're going to want some sort of like, instead you're going to want a, a, going to want a, a public class debug event info, which is like, exactly the same thing um but show you it there's going to be a logging system nothing to add here oh. priority levels maybe for like priority slash verbosity levels actually that's probably a good idea um some sort of like integer um public integer ver verbosity level which is going to have a value so of, I don't know, whatever makes sense in your system, from 1 to 5. So where, like, 5 is, like, the most spammy kind, or the most important messages, like, holy crap, we've got a crash, horrible disaster, whereas, like, 0 or 1 is just babble, just garbage, like, constantly being spewed in there. So you have some sort of logging 
system that is listening to all events or all debug events. And then depending on what your debug level is set to, if it's so it's set to a three. So all debug event infos that have a verbosity level three or above, we actually write out to log or something like that. Um, obviously this has to descend from event info. Anyway, so that, that avoids the problem of like anyone making this, but in a sense, there's nothing stopping health over here from registering the wrong kind of type. You know, we're making, all of a sudden we make a debug info event or something and then feed into the fire event. So depending, if you screw up your code somewhere, you could end up in a situation where a death listener, this line fails because, well, the event info is not actually a unit death info. Luckily, unlike something like C++ or something like that, it will freak out and break if that happens, as opposed to just trying to force something into a box that doesn't make sense and getting memory leaks and stuff. Actually, I don't know if C++ is vulnerable to that. I'm not sure. Anyway, so in theory, have I done everything? First, do we compile? Yes. If I hit play. Oh, key was not present in the dictionary. Um... Now, I just double clicked on it, which is probably going to load the wrong file. Event system 41 as a result of death listener 31 or 13. So this is being called and then event system 41. Oh, uh, right. We actually have to check. So this is just checking to see if the list returned by at this key exists. What we actually have to do is also check, does it, does event listener contain a key of type event type? Or is this null? So, or sorry, if, if this is false, again, I could put the exclamation mark, but for the tutorials, I like to be explicit. So if event listeners doesn't contain something with this key, or it does contain something with this key, but it's a null list for some reason, which should never happen, then we need to make sure to instantiate that. It'll put something in under that key and make sure it's a valid list. Okay, let's try that again. I'd forgotten about that. So if I hit play. Okay, no errors. If I hit S, we spawn some stuff. And more importantly, if I hit D, all these, these three units should all die and should all fire a death event. Boom. They did, and our listener was ready to listen to that. So you have to do a slightly more work in the sense that we have to manage, you know, we have to have this event system ready to accept events and then um, broadcast them to all the listeners over here, uh, or sorry, over here to broadcast them to all the listeners. Um, and there's some room for optimization in terms of how this is set up here. Uh, and you also have to go and have um, two things. You're gonna have to have, uh, a sort of enum listing all the different types of events over here. And again, I'd be tempted. I think what I do here is cut that enum out and probably you could do it as a separate file, like just, Oh, new class. That's the new item. It's exactly the same. Just do like a blank file. Uh, anyway, um, something like event types and just keep it in one area here. Uh, move the code in there. Uh, event types. It's not, it's not a C sharp script or anything. It's actually basically all we want is a namespace inside the namespace. We're going to define some event types like that. And it's probably better organized if we do something like this. So these are all the types of events that you can fire in our system. And then that's probably, again, there's gotta be a way to get um, errors in here, but okay, you're fine. You're just referring to event type, which is okay. It's gonna be right here. Cause um, it's not event system that event type. It's just within the event callbacks namespace. So we can just save ourselves a little bit of timing, same th or typing, uh, same thing here. We don't have to go with system, not this. We just say event type, unit died. And then you've got one list. In a, in, a, in a way, though, event type and event info are very strongly linked. So there might be some better way of organizing this. But these are all the types of events that you can fire and that people will listen to. And some of these will be over overlapping, right? The thing is, I guess there's nothing stopping you from having multiple events fire for the same event type. 
Here's actually an interesting... What if... Instead of being keyed by this enum, like this. Actually, yeah, I think I just had a brainwave that I should have done before. Let's get rid of these, this enum completely. Okay? So we no longer have, in the event system over here, there we go, we no longer have this event type. Instead, what this is going to respond to is... is the type of event info class. That's what we're going to filter by. Because it would be, wouldn't it be interesting, and I'm sure there's a way of doing it, if the class that you specify over here is also your fil filter for listening. So what I mean by that is, in over in health, instead of saying what type of event, if I could just say fire event for this, we're creating a unit death info event, fire this event. This tells you what kind of event it is and also has all the data for it. So over in an event system, when we get the fire event, so we no longer take an event type because this doesn't exist. And instead for our dictionary, what we're actually using is something like type of this. We want the true class of this. Now, I don't know if this is going to return event info or the true final type. I wasn't going into this tutorial thinking about this. I might have to put a cut in here and double check the correct syntax for doing this. Um, and then you change event listener. So this returns a class. It's a system type. So all of a sudden our dictionary, the key for it is system.type is the key. System.type, system.type. And then something like death listener, instead of specifying ident type dot unit died, we say, listen, we won't just want to listen to this. And at the same time, would you be able to do templated code? where instead of this, although we're getting there, um, we type of, yeah. Instead of doing this, could you do something like, like this? I bet you can do something like that. My apologies for, apologies for getting off the rails right at the end here. And I'm just wondering if we could actually get a typed final event over here and save us from this. I'm not, well, yeah, we can. Because the fire event could recast things at that point. Because it knows... Oh, I'm sure I'm losing a lot of people. I'm really sorry. Because over here, it would know at this point... What the final and true class of this is, right? You know, true event info class is equal to something. I don't think type of this works. I mean, for crying out loud, we're getting uh, is a variable but used like a type. Um, there's, there's some other there's some other method to get this. Um, uh, C sharp get class name from variable. Type descriptor dot class name. Get type. dot get type like this true event true event and then finally we cast this so this event info will be of type event info but at this point it should cast it uh that's going to return the wrong thing, isn't it? Yeah. 
You get type on this is not the right one we're looking for. Uh, it's subclass of, we can do checks. Can we cast from this? I'm sure there's a way to do this. I will probably put a cut in here. This has gone on way too long. But you know what I'm doing? Like I'm saying, and then, and then we end up with a situation where our death listener can just properly, it knows for sure it gets the right event type. I bet you there's a way to do this. But I guess I should leave this be for now. Um, uh, I still think this is okay. I, I don't know about like the magic retyping of things. That's probably not what we want to do. We'll just call like this. This is the only part I'm not quite sure about. But I love the idea of getting rid of the enums. Because we were having to keep two separate lists of things, which overlapped, but not literally so in weird ways. So now we have no enums. The only thing we care about when something is saying, hey, I want to listen to an event, is you declare what type of event you listen to. And when you fire an event, um, like in health, you just fire the event of the right type. And anything that's trying to listen to an event of that type will then be notified. You still have to do a cast here as is. Let me make sure we run. I bet you there's a way to fix that. And what I'm going to do is um, there'll be a link down below to download this code. Um, I will try to get that in there in the final code. I'm just going to have to do a little bit of looking up. Just check right now. We can spawn objects. If I hit D to kill, we get notified. Beautiful. Oh, I'm so much happy. I wish I'd thought of this before I started the tutorial, but it didn't occur to me until I was in it that, hey, there's probably a better way. So the one thing I don't like is that we have to rebox event info into the true final form over here. I would like this to just be this because it makes this clean code a lot cleaner. We're effectively going to do exactly the same thing as this in fire event, but it'll look nicer. So I want to say thank you for watching. I want to say I also want to say thank you. We haven't uh, actually gotten the credits in here. I just realized all the um, the live stream videos I was doing, I wasn't actually including the credits properly. So uh, I want to say thank you to everyone supporting this on Patreon. You guys are continuing to make these videos possible. I love you so much for all that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting it, uh, including these mic check supporters. We've got Jeremy Strone, John Pavlik. We've got Tiburon. We've got Mighty Mix 1900. We've got Pavel Zdanov, Michael McClintock. We've got Rarskal. We've got Gurko Dries or Dries? I'm going to go with Dries. I don't know. We've got Julien Ogelafon. we got Marius Field Vol. we got Speedy Svant, Steven Steger. Ewald Schult, Schult, probably Schult, Thomas Oberson, Jason Yanity, Easter Egg Productions, oh, good name, and Neil Blakey Milner. And once again, thank you for everything. And we'll be back with some more tutorials real soon. And again, check the link in the doobly-doo so that I can resolve this. We want to cast this to the true event info. Oh, God, it's got to be so easy to do. Um, cast variable, oh, C-sharp. Cla cast variable from system.type type. Casting using system.type. Yeah, see, it's two-second Google. Um, the example here would be convert.changeType of event info to true event. Like that. Or true event. That doesn't work. And then there's still a the problem, like... Do I even need to do this? Because... Ah, yeah, I definitely need to put a cut in here. Because if I do this and that, then this doesn't become legal anymore. Yeah. Because it's the wrong type. Yeah, it's not just a matter of casting at the end. It might not be possible to do it. It's not just a matter of casting at the end. Because this would definitely need some sort of... To be templated in some way. Oh, God. I was supposed to put a cut in here. Okay, well, tell you what. The real video is cut. If those of you who want to keep listening to my sort of frustrations and things, can feel free to do that. 
so if we go, oh, because the delegate, yeah, we, we can't de de um, define a delegate on the fly. Can we? This would hold the thing. Yeah. N arr. I feel like it's so close. Like, I need to be able to do something like this. Oh, there's probably a way to do it. There's probably a way to do it. And then over here, like, the event type is our T, T, T. Well, you know what might have been easier here? Let's do that. There's no reason you have to always use T. But we need to accept a function that's got a signature that's something like this. Uh, using event type. Um, C sharp template uh, parameter? Delegate. Surely someone else. How can I pass in a funk with a generic type parameter? Downcasting. I converter downcasting. Oh, do I... I don't use square brackets here. No. Can you use the funk helper? Uh, yeah, we'll just rename it system.funk. Um, funk, which is actually, uh, sorry, listener, listener. Do we, do we do this? No. And type is a type which is not valid. Right. So this actually wants to be type of that. Yeah, okay. Um, so, because it's a system.type is what we want here. So, I don't know. We'll just, uh, we'll rename this to um, event type type. Actually, what I'll do is I will actually rename this to T. That way, event type becomes type of T. And then goes here, and this becomes T. Uh, get rid of the type of, because that's redundant. And then, right, and then it still comes down to we can't add this listener. Because we can't just say that this is going to be a list of funks. No, that's okay. It's, um... 
Yeah, okay, hold on. This will be a list of event listeners. What we can do is we can wrap it. I can make a temporary little function as a wrapper, uh, which just takes an event info and then calls the real function. So our listener in this case is going to be this generic thing. So like uh, what I can do is say event listener wrapper is equal to this. And what this is going to do is it's going to call this listener with EI casted to T. Uh, oops. Cannot convert type event info to T. Uh, you can if you know that this is a subclass. How do you do that? Um, no, event info. Um, C sharp delegate, or sorry, C sharp template. Um, subclass or something like that. <clears throat> Outside of this? For a function. Uh, where T, that's what it is. Um, is it after or before? Where T is a subclass of event info. Okay, that's still fine. Does not take one argument. Doesn't it just take one element? Confused. Doesn't listener just take one element? T, T is equal to new T. Oh, I can't instantiate from here? Doesn't have the new constraint. Uh, I know that you won't be initialized, but... You not take one argument. What do you take? You take zero? How do you take zero? Oh, because a function returns the first thing. We actually want system.action. Uh, so this takes one parameter now. Use of unassigned variable, that's fine. Okay. And then we can cast you to a T. Excellent. And then we add the wrapper. Okay. So now, so this dictionary just has a list of things that match the event listener um, delegate, which actually no longer has to be public at all, as far as I know. Mm, oh, and then this thing can be updated to match this signature. Boom, like this. There we go. Register listener takes two arguments. Oh, no overload for it does. That's right. Because we don't have to pass this type of. We have to say we're registering a listener of event or of unit death info. Boom. Convert does not exist. That's okay. We don't need to do this. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we do. We still have to figure out 
how to cast event info to this. That's the only thing. <clears throat> so my type converter I converter be some handier way to do this. <clears throat> Um, so we need cast using system type. Type references variable change to casting. System that change type. I, I feel like even this, there's something that I'm missing here. Is this all of a sudden okay? No, there's no way. Oh, no, we still have this. Hold on. So I want to get the right type of thing right from there. Good. And now you will complain because, or is no one complaining anymore? This doesn't feel right. Oh no, it's fine because yeah, yeah, we're doing the um, we're doing the conversion here. There we go. This is where we're doing our casting. So right, so the event listener just needs any event info, and it's in here that we're wrapping. Wrap a type conversion around the um, event listener, which will guarantee that death listener now has this over here. Conceivably, when we're running here, um, uh, if we're somehow, this shouldn't actually be a problem. There should be no way, because events register themselves based on the type they're looking to listen for. Like, if I just change this to, like, event info, then this will be a mismatch over here. Yeah. So you get told right away if there's a mismatch. So we specify what we're listening for. This has to be what it's looking for over here. And I think at compiler time, we actually make sure that all the types work out. We still do this one type conversion over here, but I don't think there's any logical way where we end up where we're trying to cast this event to something that is not actually the one that the final um, function is waiting for. I bet you there's a way to do this without this wrapper. Someone who's a little bit more up on... Um, C-sharp syntax can probably solve this one for me. And again, I'll be putting this up on, on GitHub, even though it's owned by Microsoft now. Um, and so someone can put in, there. there I, I suspect there might be a, uh, someone will push some sort of change to make this cleaner. Um, I'm betting someone better at C-sharp generic syntax can find a way around this. But I think the code is solid. I think it's, the, sorry, I think the code is functional. Let's not say solid. So I'm gonna hit S to spawn some stuff. I'm gonna hit D and there we go. We get alerted about unit death. So in the end, we end up with a fairly kinda, there's some arcane stuff going around in the event system, but it's it's basically done and fully self-enclosed. Again, I might just make this a not a mono behavior, just be a static class might be a way to go. Um, we actually might want on start to explicitly set current to be equal to this as well, uh, just in case, because this old static data will kick around. There's a possible timing issue. I guess we do like on enable, which is the one of the soonest things. Um, if this were static, we wouldn't have to worry about this timing issue. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of going static instead, although we'd probably have to listen to something like a scene reload event to purge this list of listeners. Or maybe we don't want to purge the list of listeners. Maybe we want some of this to persist between scenes. I don't know. So there, there's there are things to be considered over there um, with that. 
But yeah, now again, I do like the fact that all we do is now whenever we want to listen to something, we say, here, listen, I'm, I'm, I want to register a listener. This is the kind of info I'm looking for. So anyone who fires an event with this info, I want to know about it. The info is the type of the event. I love the fact that that's the case because that would always be the case. The having, setting up the, um, the enum and setting up the structure as two separate things when they're really the, the one and the same. So now the, the structure is the type of the event. I love it. Call this. So whenever someone dies, whenever any event is fired with this type of info, this will get called. And I think that's beautiful. It went up something very simple, very easy to explain. You can, you can add a new system to your game without changing anything else in the game. You can just add a new system simply by having the new system listen for the right kind of stuff. And I think that's lovely. Thanks for watching. Credits happened previously. <laughs> Love you all. Bye-bye.